how long does it actually take to go from being a hobbyist in terms of making beats to becoming a full-time music producer, earning a multiple six-figure income, selling beats online? The answer after this. DelicateBeats.com The media loves a good overnight success story. From experience, especially in the music business, that's just very, very difficult uh, and maybe even impossible. Music is way too complex to be mastered in like a year. In this video, I want to share my exact timeline from the day I started doing music to when exactly I started my full-time music career. I feel the need to show you a more realistic timeline than what we see on popular blogs and news outlets. I kind of want to discourage you, not because I don't want you to succeed, but because I actually do want you to succeed. And for that to happen, you need to be realistic with just how much effort and time it actually takes. Keep in mind that building a business takes a lot of time and energy. It's a marathon. So when you get tired, you just have a game plan and you know that you're not quite there yet, but you will get there. All right, let's go. 1986. I'm six years old. That's the year my mom saved my life. You see, she forced us to all learn a musical instrument. That's my big sister, me and my younger brother. As part of her grand vision to create complete human individuals. My grandmother and mother thought that learning music was essential to develop the human brain. I have to agree. What my mom didn't know is that these piano lessons would plant a seed in my mind. A seed by which I would later on choose a different career path to make my life complete. 1990. I received my first Yamaha synthesizer for Christmas. It's a PSS 140. I start stacking it up on top of the piano, trigger drum beats on it, and play the bass on the piano with my left hand and the lead on the Yamaha with my right hand. Unbeknownst to all, I'm making my first beats at 11 years old. Two years later, 1992. I'm now finishing elementary school. I have done five years of classical piano, took one year off because I couldn't handle practicing anymore. And now, under my mom's pressure, I accept to pick a different instrument, just so that I don't waste my talent. I pick the guitar, the acoustic classical one. I wanted to learn the electric guitar to be like my idol Steve Vai, but apparently you need to learn the classical one first. Whatever. I do half a year. The problem is still the same. I don't have fun. I want to learn pop pieces. I want to be able to improvise. I am not free with my creativity. The teacher tries to convince me to stay, offering to teach me any song I want, but I'm already out of the door. I have ADHD and sitting there for hours practicing the same passages over and over again is absolute torture. I quit. 1995. I'm in third grade of high school. We're all very much in a hip hop now, listening to Wu-Tang Clan's 36th Chamber, Cypress Hill and Daz FX, to name a few. The same year, a friend of mine shows me two music softwares, Rebirth to make Acid House and Impulse Tracker. I try Rebirth, but I can't make anything that remotely resembles hip hop with it. Impulse Tracker is where it's at. I start sampling open drums on my favorite CDs. Kids simply will never understand that grind. Very quickly, I put together my first beat CDs and received the harsh critics from wannabe rappers at my school. My beats suck, but I know they won't suck forever. Two years later, 1997, I start researching more seriously what pros use in terms of equipment and software. I know there's a big gap in quality between my beats and the ones I hear on my favorite CDs, and I'm not having any of that. I end up investing in a Creative Labs sound card that comes equipped 
with a 15 pin MIDI input, RCA output jack and a sequencer called MIDI Orchestrator Plus. There's also a WAV file editor and a sound font editor to create sample libraries. My beats take a big step as I'm now able to mix sound font, sample banks, a drum machine and a Roland module. Back in those days, VSTs and software synths didn't exist, or at least not that I knew of. So you had to pretty much understand complex MIDI routing and well, Google didn't exist yet. I pretty much learned everything on my own by trial and error. A year later, 1998, I start spending my summers working as a counselor in a summer camp. At the end of each summer, I invest the $2,000 that I've amassed in better sound modules and drum machines. My big breakthrough comes when I get my hands on a MoFat module by EMU. I finally have a great combination of hip hop drums, synths, and samples. This changes everything. You have to realize back in those days, a MoFat cost a little below $2,000 on eBay. And its ROM probably contained what you can now get for like 300 credits on Splice. Think about that for a second. 2001, I finally get my hands on my very first MPC. It's big, it's bulky. I can't really explain the feeling you get when you finally put your fingers on these soft gray pads. You see, back in the day, an MPC was a mythical beast. Nobody had the money to buy one, and on eBay, they sold crazy fast whenever there was a deal. In my hometown, only one dude had one, and it was the be-all, end-all production machine. Producing on the MPC has a very different feel than a computer. That's when I learned what a time clock actually is. As a Kai touted all the time back in the day, the timing was rock solid on these things. It's very difficult to explain, but your beats feel tighter and everything is punchier because of that. Around the same time, I become very close with a local rapper and we release his first solo album. I produce every track on the album. Basically, my best 12 beats from the past six years make it on there. It's also the first time my music gets on TV. As you can imagine, it's the best feeling on earth. That's when I realized that maybe I should start selling my beats. 2002, I start working my first full-time job straight out of college. I burn out in 11 months and I move to a bigger city to clear my head. I have now moved on to the MPC 2000 Excel and given my old MPC to my little brother who's becoming a good producer himself. I start rebuilding my network of rapper customers. Around the same period, I meet my future ex-wife and we move back to my old town. I rebuild my studio and I get my first Fender Rhodes. Man, this thing sounded amazing. The name Delicate Beats finally makes sense as I start producing more and more R&B, for which I have zero customers. I go back to hip hop, but it's simply not my favorite at this point in my career. From 2003 to 2010, my little bro finishes his MBA and starts helping me build a steadier income from beat sales. He helps me reach out to customers, negotiate deals, improve pricing and profitability. My music sales grow and the income becomes substantial. The goal is to grow it so I can do it full time, but selling beats to local rappers has a glass ceiling. Government grants do not quite exist yet and the budget for these artists is very limited. That's when I start researching ways to monetize my music online. 2011. My best friend introduces me to stock music licensing. A friend of his knows the owner of a local stock music marketplace. After a few years, his sales pay his rent. He tells me about it and instantly, I need to get on board. He gives me the phone number of said owner and I have a great chat with him about making hip hop beats for this library. And as it's the most visited page on the website, 
uh, he tells me he needs better beats and more beats. I'm on it. Rapidly, I get the top hip hop selling beat on the website. Checks get bigger and I gradually start phasing out my beat selling business with local rappers. I only work with artists who have become friends along the way. But the time investment starts to make less and less sense compared to the hourly rate I make selling the music online. I start drafting my transition plan to leave my day job. 2013. I score an incredible job as a user experience manager in a Fortune 500 company. I finally make six figures, which I thought would be the be all end all. Problem is, I'm bored to death and thoroughly unhappy. Sales are getting really good with the stock music stuff. I make a quick calculation and the math checks out. If I work 40 hours a week on this stock music thing, I can live off beats. Six months after being hired, I quit my job and the rest, as they say, is history. So how long did it take? 24 years from the first real beat. 17 years from my first beat sale.